Let's practice more modeling in ANSYS APDL. So let's start with prep 7, which takes us to the pre-processing, which is a stage where we create our models. Now I want to create a key point, key point number 1, or I could actually leave this blank so ANSYS will pick the number for me automatically. At x of minus 0.1 and y of minus 0.1 and z is 0, that's the first key point. Then I want to define another key point at x of minus 0.1 but y of 0 or y of 0.1. So that's the next one. By pressing the up arrow, arrow I go back to my previous commands and I can just mo modify them. So I get a third key point there. And then finally, I want to create a fourth key point here. So I have four key points that I could use to create a um, rectangle with. Now I want to create another key point at 0, 0, 0. So that's at the origin. Now I want to create another key point and move it outward in the z direction and for, for one unit. So if I come and take a look at this in, uh, in 3D, key points 1, 2, 3, 4 are here, key point 5 is at the center, and key point 6 is in here. Now I want to create an arc of radius 0.5 here from key point 6 to another key point 7. So what I have to do is to create a key point at z of point 0.1 so or z of 1 so let me put the 1 there and y is going to be 0 but I want to give a an x of point 0.5 so this is the key point that is created for me now I want to create another key point and this time the location of the z is going to be 1.5 so if I zoom out, I have these key points. So let's create lines with the key points. First, I want to create a line between key point 1 and 2, then between 2 and 3, between 3 and 4 now, and then between 4 and 1. All right, basically, I accidentally did 2. So if I, if I say L delete, the last one was line 4. So that one is deleted. Now I can say L 4 and 1. So I've created that. So if I do PNUM lines and 1 and then do replot and do L plot, I have 4 lines. Now I want to create a key a line between key points five and six, which I have I don't have right now. If I do k plot, and if I do pnum kp comma one and do replot, a key point between or a line between key point five and a key point six. So if I do l five and six, a line is created. Now I want an arc from 6 to 8 with the center 7. So I could say L arc from 6 to 7 or 6 to 8. Center is 7 and the radius is 0.5. So that is created. If I do L plot now, I have my all of my lines. So I'm going to create an area with lines 1 to 4. So I could say AL 1, 2, 3, and 4. And now the next thing I want to do is to extrude or, or sweep this line or this area, the first area, along lines 5 and 6. The command for that is vdrag. And as you can see here, it needs up to 6 areas, but I only have 1 area, so I can just give 1 and give 5 more commas. So 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Now the lines would be 5 and 6. So I have the areas or the volumes created for me. 
if I turn off the numberings for those lines and key points, I can see my volume created for me. So I can actually take a look at the volume numbers under numbering volumes. So you have two volumes, one here and one here for the two lines that I use to create my path. Let me turn off the volume numbers. Now let's define an element type. I want to say element type 185, which is a structural element type, lower order. And let's give some material properties. For example, Young's modulus, so MP for material property, EX for Young's modulus, reference number one, and the value, let's say 200 gigapascals, and the Poisson ratio, MP, PR, XY, material model one, and the value is 0.3, let's say. And then let's define an element size, E size, for element size, and I can give a value of um, 0.1, let's assume. And now I can use the command vmesh. vmesh is short for mesh volumes. So I can put a comma here and either say all, or I can say 1 to 2 and the increment is 1. They're both going to work because I only have two volumes in here. So if I press enter, my volume is meshed. And this is not really a very coarse mesh or a very fine mesh. This is a very coarse one. So what I can do is v clear and say all here. And the mesh is removed, but I still have my volumes. So if I change E size to a little bit smaller than that, for example, 0 0.25, 0 .0, I have a finer mesh, which I can use for analysis. So the finer mesh in here. I can select these nodes, the ones on the surface, and fix them in all directions. So if I say N cell, S for selection, by location in Z direction, and their Z or their X was 0.5. So this is actually X, not Z. And if I do N plot, and you see that those nodes are selected and I can say D for degree of freedom and because it's structural it's going to be only displacements all the nodes all degrees of freedom to be zero so D is for degree of freedom the nodes I will select all of them so I can say all label I could say UX UY UZ or all for all of them and the value is zero so if I press enter those nodes are fixed I have to select everything. I do all cell, then E plot. Now I have some nodes selected for me. Now I can consider this as a half model. Imagine that I have exactly the same portion applied to, or in the, in the bottom half of this model. What that means is that this surface at Z equals zero will not have displacement in the Z direction. So if I select N cell S, which means select nodes at location Z0. If we do end plot here, only those nodes are selected. I can say D, all the nodes, UZ0. So now I'm just only restricting in Z direction. I can say all cell again, and then E plot. Now select the nodes here, but up to y.25. So selecting the nodes on this surface, which is at x equals 0.1. So n cell s location x of 0.1. Let's do n plot for now. 
So all of those nodes are selected. Now I want to say end cell, again select nodes, but now reselect from the selected set and say location and y from 0 to point 0.25. Now and plot. Well, actually, I should have selected in the z direction. So let me redo this. All cell and cell s location x of point one. Again, and plot to see what I have. Now let's go back to the line that I selected in y direction. It should be in z direction. Now and plot. It looks better. Now I want to apply some surface force to these nodes. Use surface force, SF, to all the nodes and I want to apply pressure toward the surface so it's going to be positive. And let's apply a 100 Pascal positive pressure or actual pressure on the surface. So that is done. I can do all cell and E plot. And I can do finish. Now I can solve this problem. So the solution stuff is done in here, but I don't need to define anything for the features of this analysis right now. So I can just do backslash solu and then, or let, let me do this, although it's not necessary, but I can say n type for analysis type, static, and solve. So the model is solved. It says solution is complete. Then I can come to post processing and either from the command line, again, it would be post one. Command line, I can say PLN sol, plot node all solution, U, which is displacement, and let's say vector sum. So this is how my model would deform based on the load that is applied to it. I can also say, PLE sol, pl plot nodal element solution, stress, and that EQV for von Mises. So this is the von Mises stress along my elements. Something I can do also is to come to plot controls under styles, symmetry expansions, and do periodic or cyclic, and do a half model. There's no half model in here, but reflect about x, y plane. So if I close this window and move this so I can click on this button. Now this is how my model looks like or how ANSYS sees my model as a half model that I created but it's actually there's a mirror underneath it. So we learned how to create an area and sweep it along a path to create a volume meshed it and applied degrees of freedom and forces to solve an ANSYS APDL.